Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Hannah and let's talk Knock at the Cabin. So this is the new M. Night Shyamalan movie that is just coming out in theaters. I'm in France and we get our movies here on Wednesday. So occasionally, like with this one, we get movies a few days earlier than the US does. As some may not know, this is based on the Paul Tremblay book, the Cabin at the End of the World, which is a much better title than A Knock at the Cabin. Why they changed it, I have no idea because the book is far superior. So I just got home from seeing this about an hour ago. So this is very fresh in my mind. And I am speaking my opinions from the space of, I have read the book and I really enjoyed the book. So do keep that in mind with some of the things I'm going to say about this movie. I'm also going to do spoiler free here in the beginning and then my cat is meowing. And then I will mark spoilers for when I get into stuff that I really want to be able to talk about. So I was extremely happy with this movie for the first 50%. That first half is very close to the book. And I was just like, yes, like I had so much hope that this was going to deliver what I wanted. And then that all came crashing down. The second half is very different from the book. When those credits started rolling, all I felt was disappointment. I was not happy. I was very, very frustrated with what was going on. So in the end, I am in the camp of the book is a lot better than the movie. So in the US, this movie is rated R. And so with that, I thought this was going to be a pretty brutal movie. However, while watching it, I actually forgot this is an R-rated movie and there's actually minimal blood. So it just really doesn't feel like they utilize that R rating. It almost seems like maybe they had filmed this with, with PG-13 in mind and then it was changed at the last second and they didn't like go back and change stuff. I don't know what happened there, but it really doesn't feel like an R-rated movie. I actually enjoyed the way this was filmed, but I don't think that will be for everyone. Like my husband, for example, they do a lot of scenes where it's like very close in on the face. And this is like a one location movie. So it's in a cramped, like tiny cabin. So everything is just very close up in your face a lot of the time. And I was okay with that. I thought it was fine for the acting. There's some really good acting going on here. And then there's mediocre acting, acting, mediocre acting, if I can talk. The four actors that play the people descending on the cabin, I thought they were all very well done and really fleshed out. They are very similar to the characters in the book. And I thought they were so well done. I really enjoyed their performances and thought they were probably the best part of the movie. The actors that are playing the gay couple, they were not the greatest. Like they were fine. There's nothing wrong with their performance or anything, but the characters themselves felt so bland. Like we did have some flashback scenes to try to get us to care about them more and learn more about them in general but that just really didn't hit for me. They felt very unnecessary and like they were showing scenes that really didn't need to be shown. Like they could have chosen better in what they did with those um, flashback scenes in my opinion. And so I feel like they just really didn't connect with the audience as much as they wanted them to. And then Ren herself, Ren, I mean, Wen, the actress for Wen, I think she actually did best when she didn't have speaking lines. I feel like her character being in the background and everything was actually more impactful than when she was talking. The movie does start out with the scene you see in the trailer of where she meets Leonard. And so like we get right into the story and throughout that entire scene, it feels like you can tell she's just reading lines. It made it the beginning feel a little bit awkward, I thought. And so because I'm so disappointed in the end, I am only giving this like a two star rating, which sucks so much. This is one of my most anticipated movies of the year. I wanted to love it. And I really enjoyed that first 50%. Like as a book lover, I thought that was fantastic, but the end, the second half really just disappointed me so much to where I, I can't give it a good rating. It has to be a two, which I rate out of five stars. That's not out of 10, by the way. But like I said earlier, keep in mind, I am someone that really enjoyed the book. So I did have decent expectations going into this. So if you haven't read the book or disliked the book, then you are probably more primed to enjoy this than I am. Now I'm going to get into spoilers because there are some things I definitely have to talk about. So stop here if you don't want those and keep going if you wanna hear. So the main question that I think most book readers are going to have, do they show when dying? And the answer is no, like no, she lives. What the fuck? 
this whole fucking movie I'm waiting for this scene and there's a gun grappling scene because of course there is and during that I was like oh my gosh this is it and it didn't happen nothing happened no shot happened there no one gets hurt from any gun grappling or anything like that and I was just like what the fuck is going on so in the end it is one of the dads and when who lives and I'm just like no, it's not supposed to be that. When I heard this movie was getting an R rating, I thought that scene was why it was going to be rated R. I thought that pretty much guaranteed they were going to include it. But in my opinion, they chickened out. Like, why? That's such an impactful scene in the book. Like, that changes everything. And it didn't happen. It straight up didn't happen and I don't like that. So that's like a huge strike against the movie for me personally. And another huge change, which I knew they were gonna do, but not to this extent, is obviously the book ends ambiguously, ambiguously, you don't know whether this whole apocalypse thing is real or not. And that was one of the reasons why I love the book so much in the movie. There's a definite ending and we know what's happening at about the 50% point. We know for sure the apocalypse is real. These people are telling the truth. And I hate that. I feel like being ambiguous is such a better route to take with this story because then you have neither side being right or wrong. This way there is a definite winner and loser here. And that's just so much less interesting. The movie feels so much more formulaic to me and I just wasn't a fan. And since everything is definite, there really isn't an M. Night Shyamalan twist going on. Like since Wen didn't die and since there's a definite ending here, I was waiting for there to be some weird crazy twist and there wasn't. Like, was the twist supposed to be that it was real? But we find that out so early, it's just kind of like, that. that's it? So it did shock me at how, I guess, pedestrian this movie felt. So I read the book two years ago, so I don't remember every single detail, but I do remember the first broadcast they show is the tsunami, and that is in the movie. They do show that. But then I didn't think any other TV broadcasts were shown, but they showed everything else on TV. And like they had planes falling out of the sky and stuff. And so I'm like, I don't think that was in the book. This is the part I'm unsure on, but I don't think it was because then we would have known the apocalypse thing was real. So I don't think that was in the book, but they blatantly show it in the movie. And they even have Eric, one of the dads be like, I saw this figure behind you in the light. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? There's a scene in here that I actually got really frustrated and I even said out loud, that's so fucking stupid, is when Andrew, the other dad, gets the gun from the car, he, <clears throat> he doesn't want to shoot people. And like the whole situation of what he does is so dumb. He puts Leonard, which is Dave Bautista's character, he has him go in a bathroom, which has a window. And so guess what? The second he closes the door, Leonard goes through the window and it's just like, you you didn't think of that like uh but it ended up being like a fake out which we knew it was gonna happen like the second it happens it's just like uh it was so dumb so i just felt like the characters in the movie acted in ways that made less sense than in the book like i just feel like the characters in general of the couple were more likable in the book and these flashback scenes we had like it added nothing to their character i feel like it really just didn't help the story didn't help us connect to the characters anymore and I would rather just read the book again, I guess. So pretty much in the end here, I really just think if you enjoyed the book, you're probably not gonna enjoy the movie. And if you have not read the book or did not like the book, then you will probably enjoy this movie more. But if you've seen it, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts because this is just my opinion and it really doesn't mean anything. So thank you for hanging out with me in this little mini review kind of thing going on here. But it is always appreciated, and until next time, bonjour and au revoir.